Hey, it's Al Zay Calhoun with Covenant Consultant, and today I want to cover five steps to a profitable speaking engagement. So first, let's set the stage by acknowledging the fact that you should be speaking. You are the leader of your consulting business. In most cases, you're the rainmaker for your consulting business, meaning your job is to close the big dollars. Your job is to close the big sales. And speaking publicly is one of the best ways to attract those high-level, premium, great clients. So you should be in the speaking business. It should be a, an active part of your marketing mix. Secondly, is you may or may not get paid to speak. One of the things about being a public speaker is the assumption that, you, that you'll get paid just to show up. That may or may not be the case, but just because you are not paid to speak doesn't mean that the speaking engagement can't be profitable. So we're going to talk about that today in, in the video. Third is that you being in front of the audience is not about you speaking. It's not about how much you know. It's not about how much you want to share. It's not about you know, how much you want to help people. There is another way to think about how you structure your presentation, and that's what today is about. But this is the place where consultants make the mistake of overcoaching, overtraining, and overwhelming their audience because they want to share so much. It's not about you speaking. So what is it about? The first thing it's about is who is in the room. So generally speaking, the, the room is sorted by beginning, intermediate, and advanced. So you'll ask whoever invited you to give you a sense of how comfortable people are with the topic you've been asked to speak on. So are they, are they at a beginning stage just getting started? Are they intermediate? They've got some experience but they're still trying to figure everything out. Or are they advanced high level and you can talk about the more advanced approaches. So you've got to figure out who actually is in the room. Next is you have to figure out what their common problem is. So no matter how many people are in the room and what their range of experience is, you've got to figure out what the common problem is. What is everybody in that room suffering with? What, what, what do they all have in common? And so some ways to think about this is beginners trying to get started. If, if they are road warriors challenging the journey or they're experts looking for something new. So depending on what that mix of people are in, in the room, even beginners may be looking for something new, you know, depending on exactly what, what's going on. So, but your job is to figure out the, the spread, the range of people in the room, where they fit beginning and immediate and advanced, and then try to figure out what the single big idea is that is common amongst all of them. What is the, what is the problem uh, that is common in the room? So then, after you've done that, now you can format your presentation. Notice we didn't format the presentation up front. Is that there's some research we had to do before that. But now we are prepared to format the presentation. And so here's what that looks like very, very simply. Is you begin with an introduction. This is a place where many consultants make a mistake. Is they will begin to brag on themselves. You start talking about how long you've been in business, how, what your long client list looks like, all these different ways you can help people. That's not what your core audience, the people in that room, are concerned about. You've already identified their core problem. They're at the one common problem that, that is, is common amongst all of them. So the introduction should speak directly to that. So you tell them who you are, you tell them what you do, and then you quickly identify the problem. I understand that everybody in the room is, is challenged with X. And so I have my own experience with X, and this, and this is what I did, or, or this, is, this has been my experience. That fits your introduction. So then you can move into identifying specific pieces of that core problem. So let's say, just for the sake of conversation, that you're talking about how to buy a new pair of dress shoes. So the first challenge may be, where do I shop? Where do I go to find the best dress shoes at all? So you would give them some suggestions, some guidelines on how to find the right places to buy high quality dress shoes. Then you can move on to challenge number two, which might be, how much should I pay? So what, what range should I expect to pay for a pair of high quality dress shoes? Well, then you give them ranges, right? So, so then that, you identify and you solve for that. And then the third might be, how do I test quality? So if I'm in the right store and I'm looking at the right range of shoes, how do I test the quality of, of dress shoes to know that they'll last me for the next five to ten years? And so 
you, uh, you give them guidelines for that. You now identify and solve problem number three. So once you've done one, two, and three, then you can go straight to your conclusion, which is basically a repeat of what you gave in the introduction. You tell them again, this is who I am, this is what I do, and I understand everybody in here was trying to figure out how to buy high quality dress shoes. And here are three of the things you are probably going, going to be confronted with. Then you offer them an appropriate next step. That's the call to action. Now, depending on exactly what your business does, you may already have a consulting offer already ready, a, a, a specific service that you already have packaged up. You simply allow them to take a step into that offering. Perhaps you have a book to sell, then you offer them a chance to buy the book. If you have a new group coaching program or whatever, you just give them the appropriate next step. Don't make this difficult, don't make it hard, and don't stress over it. Conclude and then offer the next step. Now, finally here is you've got to do the follow-up. A mistake made by many consultants is we're so happy to be in front of the audience and we're so jazzed to be in front of the audience and share what, share what we have that we don't make time for follow-up. We're in the room, we have all that fun interacting with people, then we're back at our desk 24 to 48 hours later and it's business as usual and there's no time for follow-up because we're, we're back doing our, our normal task when you prepare your speaking engagement when you prepare your your presentation prepare to make time for the follow-up as well and so here's what the follow-up may look like you may be offering free consultations as the call to action at the end of your presentation well you've got to schedule out some time for free consultations you may offer a free gift for everyone that signs up to your newsletter. Well, if so, you've got to prepare that free gift, whatever it is, and then make sure, make sure that, that the free gift actually gets out. By the way, nobody wants to sign up for your newsletter. Nobody likes newsletters. So if you ask people at the end of your, at the end of your presentation to please sign up for your newsletter, that's a missed opportunity. If you give someone a gift, give someone a reason for signing up. Listen, everybody here will get my gift of ABC if they sign up for my free newsletter. That gives people a, a compelling reason to sign up. But simply offering the bland call to action of sign up for my newsletter doesn't get it done. So make sure that you send out those free gifts, whatever you promised. And then if you do have a consulting offering already packaged up and ready to be sold, and you earn clients on that day, then you need to send them a thank you note. And whether it is a written note that you send out personally or you buy a package of gifts and you, and you send those physical gifts out, you need to put something in the mail to the people who bought on that day. So there you have it. There's the outline. Those are five steps for a profitable speaking engagement. Also attached to this post is this mind map plus a walkthrough of the, of the entire article plus some, uh, a template you can use. So please download those materials and use them to get the most out of your next speaking engagement. Again, thank you so much for your time. My name is Alzay Calhoun with CovetedConsultant.com.